Hello there everyone, my name is Clink, and welcome back to The Legend of Zelda. Um, so last time, we made our way throughout Hyrule and obtained most of the upgrades that are going to be on the surface for the game, and finally ended off here in Dungeon 1. Uh, today we're actually going to get our way through this place pretty quickly, I might add. It's not very large. Most of the dungeons in this game really won't take more than 10 to 15 minutes, really. Um, this first level is going to be called the Eagle. Um, this game and Link's Awakening are really two games where they had a name and then the dungeon would be shaped uh, based on that name. Um, although this one, uh, I don't know why it's called the Eagle personally. I think it looks more like a genie lamp. Um, but uh, yeah, first off we're going to go to the left and right so that we can get a key in each side, and then um, by taking out keys and Stalthos, and then there's going to be more another key in this room with Stalthos. Um, this room right here is going to have the compass. Um, so Link's Awakening uh, changed how the compass works in the Zelda series. Up until then, so in this game and A Link to the Past, the compass just shows you where the boss is. Um, doesn't show you where chests are or anything. Uh, but one thing to point out about this room and the room to the left here is you can bomb the northern wall right here if you want to, just to get a shortcut. Um, I don't want to waste my two bombs on that, so I'm not going to, um, but that also means I have to use all the keys. Um, which, in this game, keys can transfer between dungeons, you just have a key count. You know what, actually, no, I take it back, I am going to bomb anyways. Um, I might as well save the key. Uh, by the end of the, or not by the end of the game, but like later on in the game you can actually have quite a few keys if you uh, play your cards right and skip quite a few areas and dungeons. Uh, but this room here is gonna give us the dungeon map, and there you go, there's the uh, dungeon. I guess the top and the bottom are supposed to be like the wings of the eagle or something. Um, but first, I'm going to make my way to the left here. Uh, take out these uh, Zoles, I think. I think these are Zoles in this game, actually. Uh, kind of like the ones we saw in Link's Awakening. Um, but yeah, if we head left here... Eastmost Peninsula is the secret. Um, honestly, I still don't really know what this secret's supposed to mean. I think... It might mean the one in the top right of the map, since that... No, that's not really a peninsula. I think it's more talking about a dungeon. It might be talking about this dungeon in particular, um, considering that the Eastmost Peninsula is where the boss is, but... Um, that also just seems kind of odd. That was the biggest problem with this game, really, was the translation of these secrets was just not helpful at all. Um, and just made it more frustrating than anything. But yeah, let's head up north here, and we're actually going to make our way to the dungeon item. Uh, this dungeon technically has two items. All the dungeons in this game will have some sort of item, like most Zelda games do. Uh, but the items in this game are actually quite unique, believe it or not. Some of them are, at least. Um, if we push this block out of the way and go down here, all the items are going to be on rooms like this. I guess these are kind of like 2D rooms almost, like in Link's Awakening. I don't know what the perspective of these is supposed to really be. Um, if they ever remade this game, I think it'd be really interesting to see how they adapt some of this stuff, but I feel like Nintendo probably wouldn't remake it, because I feel like if you remade the game, you would have to change so many things about it, like the sword here. Um, I don't know if I've actually talked about it. It's pretty obvious that the sword just stabs instead of swings in an arc. Uh, that was a pretty big change that was made in A Link to the Past. Uh, but... Yeah, this game just kind of stabs. In the, uh, in the Redux patch, though, if you ever want to try that out, uh, I don't... I feel like I might have mentioned that. Or, uh, I would recommend playing this game with the Redux patch if you want to play it completely blind, just because that'll make it easier to figure out secrets and stuff. Um, it's actually... It actually will swing in an arc in that, 
Um, but in this room, let's take out these Garayas, that's what these enemies are called, and they'll drop the Boomerang. This is kind of the second item of the dungeon, if you want to consider it that. Um, I think this is a pretty helpful item. The other item we got is obviously the bow, which we can now use. Uh, one important thing to note, we have arrow, the arrow, but you might notice we don't have arrows, uh, like a count of them, because if we fire it, it uses rupees. I don't know why, but it does. I guess they just felt like, hey, let's just make the player use rupees. Um, in this room, some wall masters are going to come out. If they grab you, they'll take you back to the beginning of the dungeon. Don't let that happen and go through here to meet the boss, Aquamentus. Uh, he's just going to fire these fireballs in sets of three at you. If you want, you can run up and hit him with your sword. Uh, and the white sword should take him out pretty quickly, or you can shoot him with the bow. Uh, three shots will kill him with the bow. He died in two there since I, you know, hit him with the sword first. Uh, the bow is probably the easier strategy, but if you don't have the rupees, the sword is perfectly viable. And I'm actually going to go ahead and equip my boomerang just to uh, have it. And yeah, that's going to get us up to seven hearts. The heart containers themselves don't refill your health in this game, but the Triforce pieces will. And then you'll exit out at uh, the dungeon entrance. From here, we are going to go to level two. I was thinking about doing level three first. Um... But I have ultimately decided I will just do level 2. Um, the dungeons in this game can be done in quite a different order, but you will have to do dungeon 3 before dungeon 4, and I think dungeon 4 before dungeon 5. Because uh, I think, because I know you need the dungeon 3 item to get to dungeon 4, uh, and I'm pretty sure you also need the dungeon 4 item in dungeon 5. Um, once again, this is the screen with the uh, Great Fairy to the north, if you want to go use that. But, um, I'm not for now, and we're just gonna make our way to the right. Um, because Dungeon 2 is gonna be here in the forest, and it'd be really nice if I could stop taking damage, actually. Uh, the boomerang is not going to necessarily damage enemies, by the way. It will stun them, but that doesn't mean it's not helpful for killing stuff. You can kind of do that a little bit, stun all these guys, and then take out the moblins. I can't... If I could not get hit, that also help. Um... I think I want to go down here, if I can even line myself up properly. Yes? I want to say... No, I need to be up there, so I guess I need to go up here. Yeah, this is the right path now. This is the way to Dungeon 2. I think Dungeon 2 is gonna be... I think we just want to go up right here? And then left, I want to say? Yep, this is it, okay. It's kind of hard to remember the map of this game sometimes, just because so many screens look oddly similar. That's the... that was definitely the nice thing about them remaking Link's Awakening, was not having the screen scroll. Um, but yeah, here we are at Dungeon 2, and yeah, I guess I will end this part here very short. Uh, a lot of these parts are going to be pretty short for a while, but I'll see you guys next time where we'll take that on. Bye-bye!